Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Georgia O'Keeffe Museum's public listening session for the new museum campus in downtown Santa Fe. I'm Deborah Heslin, the head of marketing and membership at the Georgia O'Keeffe Museum. I would begin tonight by recognizing the lands of the Pueblo people on which the current and future location of the Georgia O'Keeffe Museum stand. I offer this with humility and gratitude in acknowledgement of the need to confront the ongoing injustices of settler colonialism. And now for some Zoom housekeeping. Please utilize the chat box for questions throughout the presentation, which our presenter will answer at the end. To find the chat, go to the bottom of your screen and click on chat. Above where you type your message, you have the option to send a message to everyone or the panelists. Closed captioning is also available. To turn on, you can select the CC button on your screen which is located at the top or bottom, depending on your device. And now it is my pleasure to introduce Cody Hartley, director of the Georgia O'Keeffe Museum, who will be leading tonight's presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you all for joining us this evening. It's really a pleasure to be with you in this virtual forum to present our future, to present our plans for a new and expanded Georgia O'Keeffe Museum. The George O'Keeffe Museum is just about to celebrate our 25th anniversary. We opened in the summer of 1997 in our original building at 217 Johnson Street. And over those two decades, more than two decades, we have grown exponentially. Our collections have expanded dramatically. Uh, our national and international visibility and our role organizing exhibitions that travel uh, far and wide uh, has grown substantially. And we've become part of the community in an enduring and lasting way. What we'd like to present tonight is our ambitions for a new museum building. And we're doing this in a manner that we're really asking for your input, your feedback, your response, because we want this to be a project that is for the community of Santa Fe, for the people of New Mexico, as much as it is for our visitors from far and wide. So I'm gonna walk through the designs proposed for the new building and try to give you an overview of the entire project. Because this is a kind of virtual forum, it is a little bit um, awkward. <laughs> I am sitting in a room by myself looking at a screen, uh, so it's hard for me to uh, gauge uh, feedback and, and questions. So I really do encourage you and ask you to, to use the, uh, the chat features um, to submit questions and uh, raise questions so that we can be responding to them. Um, as, as we go. Uh, and then we'll leave time at the end uh, to try to address as many of those questions as we can. Your participation in this session will help us to create a project that serves the needs of our community, that serves the educational needs of our students and schools, um, that really makes a lasting contribution uh, to this place. So thank you for being here tonight and, and please do continue, continue to participate. So if we can go to the first slide, I'll start here and give you an overview of the project. We're proposing to build uh, roughly 44, 54, excuse me, thousand square foot new facility. This would be on the property currently occupied by our research center, uh, the former Riva Yaris Gallery, the former Safeway building, depending on how long you've known you've been in Santa Fe, uh, the former home of Prima Tidal most recently. Uh, we are proposing to demolish that building and, and build a new facility to house the George O'Keeffe Museum. I know 54,000 square feet sounds like a lot. I should point out that about uh, 22,000 square feet of that is below ground. Uh, and I'll, I'll go into more detail about what happens in each, at each level, uh, but that's uh, the rough breakout. We're working with some fantastic partners on this project. And I wanna start by acknowledging the work of Gluckman Tang Architects, uh, primarily working with Richard Gluckman and Robert White. Uh, Richard and Robert were the architects for the original museum building at 217 Johnson. So they have worked with the museum for decades and, and know us and know our, our, our neighborhood and our community very well. Gluckman Tang was also the architect for the original site Santa Fe. So they've done a number of projects here in, here in, in the community. We're also working with Reed Hildebrand Landscape Architects. Um, you will see as we go through the presentation that the landscape is a very important part of this project, connecting the indoors and the outdoor spaces 
and opening up a new public green space in the heart of downtown Santa Fe that will hopefully link um, our museum with the surrounding landscape and the surrounding neighborhood. With that, let me now start talking a bit more about the design. So you're looking here at some renders of what the building can look like. So stepping back just a little bit as if we are on the corner of Grant Avenue and Johnson Street, standing in front of the county building and then looking across the street, you see the primary entrance, the kind of plaza entrance with the trees there uh, in front of us. To the right of this image, looking down the alleyway there, you might be able to recognize the back of St. Francis Auditorium at the Museum of New Mexico. The architects have really looked to the regional uh, architectural history for inspiration in this building. We're looking at structures such as Rancho de Taos Church, which was not only uh, a, a, an inspiration for folks like George O'Keefe and Ansel Adams, um, but really connects to the long history uh, of architecture, um, Adobe architecture in the area. Um, we are really thinking about ways to create a building that is both respectful and appropriate within the environment, the historic neighborhood of downtown Santa Fe, and also still of our own moment. So we are trying very hard to not replicate or not imitate um, a historic style, but to create something that is sympathetic and compatible while also being of our own age. If we can go to the next slide now. So now we're kind of spinning around the outside of the building and, and I will show you some plans to give you a better sense of, of how this sits within the, within the neighborhood. But I wanted to give you first a sense of the scale of the building and the kind of um, aesthetics of it. So now we're on the Sheridan side. So this is where the, the transit center is, uh, kind of coming from the plaza. And one of the things I wanna point out here, uh, not only can you see our new building, but I hope also see that there'll be significantly more space for the transit center. Our, our project embraces um, our, our position in downtown Santa Fe at the hub of our, of our regional public transit system. And wants, we want to work with the city to significantly improve the quality of the bus shelters and the, the, the waiting area back there uh, with great landscaping, um, appropriate uh, seating and, and shelter, shade shelters and so forth so that all of our public transit users really benefit um, from the museum's presence. Uh, it's a, a frustration to me today, as you look at that slide on the left side, image on the left side, that, that the existing building really just turns its back on the street and on the transit center, and, and we wanna change that. All right, if we can go on to the next slide, please. Here, I'm presenting uh, a couple of kind of uh, as built or current existing streetscape images uh, with the proposed building. So there are two views here, basically from the Grant side and from the Sheridan side. And you'll see at the, the top line uh, actually is kind of as it exists, the original Safeway building. And then the second line is the proposed stru new structure. And I think the, the things I really want to, to point out here is we're working very hard to make sure that the, the scale and mass of the building um, is complementary to the surrounding buildings, is respectful uh, in terms of height and massing uh, to the community, uh, fits in nicely with the research center. Um, I'm sitting currently um, in our research center, uh, the, the historic uh, Otero Berger house. And we want to make sure that we're very, very careful to, to preserve and protect that landscape and streetscape. And so both of these views are to give some sense of how the massings will change with the new facility. We can go to the next slide now. So speaking of respecting the surrounding neighborhood, uh, I want to talk just a little bit about a process called Section 106. Uh, we are the beneficiaries of some support from the National Endowment for the Humanities. I'm very, very grateful that the NEH has offered a $750,000 challenge grant to support construction of the new museum. Uh, because we're receiving federal support, uh, that federal support, we are subject to uh, what's called Section 106, which refers to the particular uh, language in the National Historic Preservation Act of 1966. 
Uh, what that means is that we are responsible uh, as part of our project to uh, consult uh, with a number of parties and the public in identifying the historic properties in the surrounding area and ensuring that whatever we do, we, uh, in terms of our new building, that we are avoiding negative impacts on the surrounding uh, historic structures uh, and working to minimize and mitigate and any um, detrimental impact. So this particular slide shows you um, our building project site in green. And uh, you can recognize perhaps the roof of the Safeway and the parking lot in front of it. And then the tree covered area that is the, the lawn surrounding our research center. And then in red, that larger circle is the area potential effect. And so that's those are the, the surrounding historic structures um, that we have agreed with our neighbors and, and with the state and the NEH um, are most relevant in terms of historic preservation. Uh, we are working with the New Mexico Historic Preservation District, um, as, as well as the National Endowment for the Humanities in the Section 106 review. And this, this kind of public uh, presentation uh, and feedback session is a piece of that process. So again, we welcome your comments and concerns as we work to identify and resolve any potential uh, effects our project might have on this historic area. I think you, some folks may be interested to know that in terms of the consulting parties, the people that we're reaching out to actively, uh, those include the Pueblo of Tasuki, the Hopi tribe, the Historic Santa Fe Foundation, the Old Santa Fe Association, uh, El Rancho de los Glandrinas, several of our other neighbors and businesses in the immediate neighborhood, uh, the City of Santa Fe Historic Preservation Division, and the New Mexico Economic Development Department. All right, we can go to the next slide now. So this gives you an overlay of the entire overview of the, the kind of entire project. So let me try to orient uh, us as we look at this. Grant Avenue is on the lower edge of this image. Uh, so that first render I showed you was on Grant Avenue, looking back to what's labeled here as Museum Plaza. And I think I can actually get a uh, cursor up so I can annotate this just a little bit. So that first uh, image I showed you was here, kind of looking up towards this corner. Um, this section here, of course, is all the new construction that we're talking about. But before I get into those details, I want to situate it within the surrounding block. So we have the alleyway uh, to the south of the project. Uh, on the north side of this block of property, we have our research center, which, as I mentioned, includes the historic Otero Berger house in the front, and then our archive and library uh, towards, towards the Sheridan Street side on the east. And then the next building over, uh, this office building here, which faces the convention center across Marcy Street, uh, is currently occupied by uh, uh, many George O'Keefe Museum staff uh, offices, uh, as well as a tenant. Uh, so this is uh, not an, an active part of this construction project, but it is for me important to note that we're consolidating a significant portion of our presence and activities within this larger block uh, of, of downtown Santa Fe. I mentioned that one of our aspirations is to create a, an open green space uh, within downtown Santa Fe. And, and that is really this, this area, this zone that, sur that divides the new construction from the research center. Uh, and it is intended to be open and accessible, creating uh, a pedestrian pathway from Sheridan Street to Grant Avenue opening up access that does not currently exist, that is, is currently gated off and we'd like to open it up for public, uh, a public thoroughfare and public access. We're thinking very much about how to create a number of types of spaces, uh, places where programs and events and outdoor classes can take place, spaces where the public can grab a lunch, where visitors can grab coffee and prepare for their visit or uh, kind of discuss after their visit what they experienced uh, in a landscape that is both appropriate for downtown Santa Fe, but also resonates with the region, resonates with local plantings, and is respectful of 
our climate, understands that we are in a high desert, that water is a precious resource and is responsible in the use of water. For those of you that know the Research Center as it currently exists, it is a, it is a beautiful facility with absolutely gorgeous landscaping surrounding it. Uh, and at the center of it, there is a significant piece of lawn. Uh, that lawn, while it is gorgeous uh, and a rare commodity in Santa Fe, consumes an inordinate amount of water. And so we've asked our landscape designers to help us retain the experience while becoming much more responsible in terms of water usage. And that's an important part of this project. Uh, I will just mention briefly, sustainability is, is a, a chief concern for us. So we've been working throughout the design process to think about how to create an efficient building, a building that makes uh, good use of, of resources uh, while maintaining appropriate climate uh, temperature and humidity for artwork is, of course, critical to us in our role in preserving George O'Keeffe's art. Uh, we want to do that in the most uh, environmentally responsible and efficient way possible. So thinking about ways to really uh, contain um, the, the climatized air, to be efficient with that, to use the mass of the building and the earth to reduce the need for climate control. Uh, implementing solar, uh, for example, uh, collecting or harvesting water for, uh, gathered from the systems and repurposing that. All of those are the kinds of systems we're looking at uh, to be uh, mindful about our impact on the environment with this project. I'm gonna come back and talk a bit more about the landscape um, as we go through this presentation. Um, if I can get myself out of annotation mode here for a moment. Um, but I do just want to point out, uh, while we're looking at this kind of overview, uh, some of the, the key features of the, the proposed landscaping, including the harvest garden um, up to, uh, sorry, bear with me, I'm trying to get back in annotation mode. Um, the harvest garden um, up on this corner here, which is really inspired by George O'Keefe's Abiquiu Garden and intended to connect visitors and students with traditional agricultural methods um, in Northern New Mexico. Uh, a series of terraces, a terrace off our library, a terrace that, that, that features the remarkable historic apricot tree that, that grows uh, on this property. Um, a series of smaller gardens, each with its own kind of experience and feeling. All right, we can now go to the next slide, please. Here's just a couple of renders of those uh, spaces. So here we're looking at the vegetable garden, what I think of as a teaching garden. Uh, I love the idea of kind of edible education that folks should really be able to, to learn about and literally taste the fruits of agriculture. And we can go on to the next slide here. With much of the project, again, we're looking to the, the landscape and light and palette of Northern New Mexico for our design inspirations. Uh, this slide gives you some sense of our intentions to preserve as many of the specimen trees uh, as possible on the site. Uh, if you, again, if you know this landscape uh, surrounding the research center, there are wonderful, wonderful trees here. I mentioned the incredible apricot tree, but we have fantastic uh, catalpa trees, apple trees. Uh, on Sheridan, there are some remarkable elm trees that are significant because they survive the elm blight. There's the incredible double cottonwood that catches people by surprise every single day. I see them walking by uh, and, and remarking on the size of the tree. Uh, and so if you look at this plan, you see the trees with the kind of jagged outlines. Those are existing trees that we will protect and preserve. And then the trees with the smooth outlines, the circles, those are all new trees intended to be planted. All right, we can move to the next slide now. This is back to the site plan, uh, just to give you some sense of, of uh, traffic flow um, from the site, pedestrian traffic flow and the various points of access coming um, from all directions. And that was really a part of our intention was to make the building easy to find and easy to get to. Uh, visitors could enter from that, that museum plaza entrance I mentioned that we looked at that first render. You can also enter from the garden coming in from Sheridan or from Grant. Uh, and we hope in the future to be able to open up access through the Marcy Street office on the corner. So coming from the convention center um, through our research center and directly into the garden. Now we can move into the building itself with the next slide, please. 
So this is an orthogonal view, giving you kind of a, a three-dimensional sense of the interior spaces. Uh, so I'd like to try to walk walk us through it. Um, if you'll do, let me do a little virtual walkthrough here. Uh, so I'm going to start with again this kind of plaza entrance here, as if we were coming in from Grant Avenue. Um, one could just as easily come in from the gardens and kind of walk through here and be in this lobby. So as you come into the space. Those, there's an entry um, area, vestibule, kind of a, a greeting area. Off to the side is a, a retail store, uh, a much expanded retail store from our current space. Uh, this roofed in area back here includes uh, lockers, restrooms, various back of house uh, services. Uh, then there's a, a, a generous and gracious lobby space uh, something we, we've never had um, in our existing facility. They'll allow us to really welcome visitors, give them a chance to get oriented before they start their visit into the galleries, but of course also serves as a space for programs, family days, events, uh, galas, dinners, whatever we might imagine in there. Off of the lobby, um, there's access to a multi-purpose room for talks and lectures uh, and a classroom. So we'll finally have a dedicated classroom on site immediately adjacent to the galleries, which is again, something we've, we've not had. Um, my, my poor education staff and, and many patient parents and teachers who have visited the museum and have had to walk classes of students across the crosswalk on, on Grant Street, Grant Avenue. Um, it is a stressful and frightening experience because traffic does not always pay attention on that street. And so to be able to consolidate all of that within one block, uh, including kind of the safe loading zone and unloading zone for buses on this side of the building along the alley is a huge advantage in terms of our educational programming. From the lobby, one has access to the galleries and we're proposing two blocks of galleries, basically. You'll see one set here labeled as G uh, and those are really intended to create a, a narrative uh, overview of George O'Keeffe's art and life. And I'll, I'll walk in a moment through kind of the key ideas and how we want to tell that story. But you'll also see a series of galleries here. here. These are changing exhibition galleries, so that they're labeled CEX here. Uh, and the advantage of this is we will always be able to present a very strong um, experience, giving again that, that introduction and overview of George O'Keeffe's art and life, while also being able to do simultaneous changing exhibitions. Those exhibitions could be drawn from our collection, they could be part of, of exhibitions that travel nationally, internationally, um, they can be directly about George O'Keeffe, they could be contextual, uh, it could focus on contemporary art at times. It gives us enormous flexibility, again, that we've just never had, uh, given the, 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 the scale and size of our original building. At the center of the building, I just want to point out there's one space labeled C. This is actually a, a beautiful interior courtyard with a dramatic skylit ceiling uh, that will allow folks to kind of orient their visit uh, around the galleries in such a way that, that one can kind of move in and out of, of various spaces um, and then be recentered at, at the core of the building. All right, now if we can go on to the next slide. We have a number of renders of the interior of the building, and I always feel like I have to offer a bit of a disclaimer uh, in terms of the renders. They're beautiful. Our design team does fantastic work, and I'm very grateful and proud to work with them. But they also convey a sense of, of completeness and finish that is a little bit deceiving. Uh, so these renders will make it appear that that everything's kind of planned and finished. Um, and that's that's really not the case. There's still an enormous amount of thought and work that needs to go into um, every detail of, of the finishes, the fixtures, the furnishings, uh, and the content of all these spaces. But I hope the renders are at least evocative and begin to give you some sense of, of the scope and scale of this building. Uh, we want it to be comfortable and yet to have adequate resources and space to do the things that we've never been able to do. Uh, so why don't we now go on from the lobby here on to the next slide, please. And uh, this is a, a, just a floor plan, but it allows me to go from the lobby into the galleries to very briefly touch on the, the story that we're going to tell, the way we want to tell the story of George O'Keefe. Um, we're doing that through a series of galleries. And at the, at the very beginning of the story, 
we start in 1929 in New Mexico, George O'Keefe's first real summer um, in New Mexico. We're, we're, not in, we're not following a chronological path. We're really doing this intentionally to kind of jump into the heart of the story, the middle of the story, um, and very clearly place New Mexico at the center of that story. For us, that is where the story of George O'Keefe's significance begins and ends. This museum could exist, this building could have been built in many other places, but it matters that we're in New Mexico. There is nowhere else in the world where you can see her artwork and then walk through the landscapes that inspired her. So we're really trying to foreground that by starting with that summer of 1929 and the works that really just rejuvenated her creativity, um, reignited her passion um, for art. And I think in many ways, um, trying to tell a story that is not about how George O'Keefe discovered New Mexico. New Mexico was here. The story is about how New Mexico saved George O'Keefe, how the light, the land, the people of this place inspired her and, and, and reignited her creativity. And so that's where we start. From there, one could follow a relatively chronologic path into a gallery called Self, which really is about how she found her own style, how she found her voice that could feature uh, early works, uh, works from early in her career, um, and then move from there into a gallery that we are calling Constellations. These are all kind of placeholder names. I, I don't know that they will stand up as we move into um, further stages of, of exhibition planning. But the idea here is it's the constellation of people, the network of people that surrounded George O'Keefe primarily in the 1920s uh, in New York uh, when she was spending her, her years uh, in the city in the winter and then in Lake George in the summer and fall, surrounded by Alfred Stieglitz and, and that just incredible network of artists and writers and intellectuals. Uh, so this is really about placing her within the context of American modernism uh, and the art world. But from there, we move into New Mexico and Exploring Home, a gallery that's really dedicated to the ways in which George O'Keefe um, found herself and found her place in New Mexico uh, and created a home for herself uh, at Ghost Ranch and at Atticue. The last gallery in this circuit is called Beyond. Uh, it is inspired by the title of the last unassisted painting that George O'Keefe created. And it really looks at her late life creativity, uh, the painting she produced inspired by travel, uh, but more so what happened beyond her own lifetime, the way in which her example and her art continues to be relevant and meaningful, continues to inspire uh, creativity and, and reflection. Uh, and so that's the way we, we kind of conclude that experience with that beyond gallery. Um, I'm going to point out just here while we're exploring home, if I can, um, one little aspect of this. On this edge of the gallery, um, there's a little box here. This actually connects outward to a, a glass box contained within a kind of beautiful courtyard, a walled garden. And I'm going to show you a render of that in, in just a moment so you can see what I'm talking about, but I wanted to connect it here so you can see where how that relates to the rest of the plan. Let's go ahead and go to the next slide. This is that central courtyard I told you about. This really is one of the kind of defining features of the space, uh, light filled. It, it is not a space intended to, to contain art. Uh, it is kind of the, the, the palette cleanser, if you will, at the center of the experience with this dramatic overhead skylight inspired by, of course, the pelvis paintings um, that O'Keeffe made in New Mexico. The hope here really is to bring the light and the sky uh, down into the space, down into the galleries, uh, and give people a, both a place to pause and reflect, but also to think about where they might go next in their journey. And you can see there's kind of uh, doorways into multiple galleries from this point. Uh, giving folks some, some flexibility in, in choosing the path they'd like to follow. If we can go to the next slide, please. This is uh, one render of what I called the Constellations Gallery, so looking at uh, her years in New York. And a couple of things I just want to point out about the, the aspirations we have for how to tell this story. I started this call by mentioning how much our collections have grown. Uh, we had just a handful of paintings in our collections when we opened, barely enough to fill the walls of our original galleries. 
over the years, our collection has grown dramatically thanks to gifts from a number of, of individuals, um, the consolidation of the George O'Keefe Foundation and its transfer of all of its materials to the George O'Keefe Museum. Uh, not only was there, were there paintings that came into the collection, we also became the, the stewards for her homes and their contents, her clothing. We've built up an incredible archive of documents about her life. Uh, all of those are materials that, that give us a tangible sense of who she was, um, her times, her, her context, uh, the 20th century. And we want to bring more and more of that material in story. And so you see a couple of examples of that in the casework here of, of what that might look like. The casework here, again, being inspired by not only the palette uh, of the region, but specifically uh, some of the furnishings that George O'Keefe herself had built for her home in Abiquiu using this very simple whitewashed plywood design. Uh, and one other thing to point out here, um, we are thinking a lot about how to use technology to enhance the experience without detracting from the aesthetic appreciation of original works of art. Uh, so you see on the right side here, um, this young man looking at a wall, kind of salon style hanging that might be a, a digital product presentation, a digital projection to help recreate a historic exhibition or display. And then again, recontextualize what O'Keeffe's work would have been doing in terms of how it both reflected the work of her day, but also how she was pushing to say something new and break away from tradition. So I, you know, not promising that, that any of this is exactly how it's gonna look in the, the final form in terms of the gallery contents, but we wanted to create something evocative to, get, to begin to give us a sense of that direction. We can go to the next slide now. This is that glass box I mentioned um, off of, of the gallery focused on, on her life in New Mexico. Uh, so again, it is a, a space a bit apart from the galleries, but connecting indoors and outdoors, a place to pause for contemplation, uh, looking out to this walled courtyard um, that takes inspiration from the architecture of northern New Mexico, takes inspiration from O'Keeffe's own patio at Abiquiu with its famous black door. The door you'll see photographed uh, kind of in the second slide, at the second image at the bottom there. Uh, the door that she said was the very reason she wanted that house uh, at Abiquiu. So, so it's a nod to the landscape and uh, an attempt to connect people, um, not, not only with um, kind of Santa Fe, but really the landscape of Northern New Mexico, uh, stepping a bit, a bit further afield from uh, the relatively um, urban at landscape of downtown Santa Fe. The rest of these images, again, are just to give you a sense of, of the types of materials and the types of textures and, and, and a color palette that our design team has been working with uh, as they think about uh, exterior and interior spaces. And with that, we can go on to the next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, this is a render of that last gallery, uh, the gallery we call the Beyond. Uh, again, focusing on paintings from the, the later years of her career, paintings inspired by her travels, by flight, uh, looking down at the land, looking out at the clouds. Uh, but again, really also about thinking, uh, allowing folks to think about her lasting and enduring legacy and impact uh, well beyond her own lifetime. And I think with that, we have gotten through the rest of the slides. Uh, we've got one more slide here that I'll, I'll leave up for a little bit while we start answering questions, just because it has some links to get more information. Our website has a whole section on it about the new museum. We continue to add material to that. Um, we continue to add links to presentations like this one. So if, if you want to come back and look at something that was presented, or you know people who weren't able to join us this evening but have questions, uh, please encourage them to take a look at that website and get more information. We'd also uh, encourage people to sign up for uh, that email uh, list there uh, or send questions that email list so we can keep in touch with you and let you know how things progress with the design. Uh, I wanna step back a little bit and just talk about where we're at in the process before I start uh, jumping in to answer your questions. I, I've seen a lot of questions coming in and that's fantastic, thank you. Um, we are, for those of you that have been involved in large construction projects. Um, we have completed schematic design. 
uh, which means that working with our design team, we have essentially um, defined the project um, to a, a high enough degree that we're able to go to the city uh, and other jurisdictional authorities to solicit approval to move forward with the project. So we're now in the middle of that jurisdictional approval process. Uh, that means um, we've had several meetings with our neighbors. Uh, we have made presentations in front of the Historic Review Board. We're preparing for presentations in front of the Planning Commission, uh, and we'll be doing that through the next couple of months. Uh, once that process is completed and the public discussion and review process that this meeting is very much a part of is completed, we'll be able to take all of the feedback and all the guidance we get and then that is fed into the design development process. So that's really the final round of design work that ends with construction drawings, allowing us to, to really begin construction. Uh, our schedule at this point is to demolish the existing um, uh, building, the old Safeway building, uh, and begin construction late in 2022. And then we would, we would be under construction uh, through the, towards the end of 2024. Uh, moving into the building and opening uh, late 2024, early 2025. So that gives you a rough, a rough sense of the timeline uh, and, and what we're looking at. Uh, so with that, I think we should switch to the questions now. Um, Renee and Debbie have been helping to collect and gather these questions, uh, and they're going to help kind of feed them to me now, and I will do my best to answer them all. Well, great. Thank you, everyone, uh, for submitting questions, and, and you can keep Keep them coming through the chat or the Q&A function. And, and thank you, Renee, for starting to get them organized. Uh, but we'll start uh, with the first question from Beverly, um, asking about what will happen to the old or the current building on 217 Johnson Street and, and the plans there. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. That's a great question. Um, we're really excited about exploring the possibilities for that space. Um, we're very much eager to hold on to it um, and incorporate it into our future programming. It is not often that you have museum quality space available in a downtown neighborhood. Uh, the question is really how do we best use that space? Um, is it part of an exhibition uh, program? Is it additional exhibition space? Uh, is some of it repurposed for educational programs? Uh, there's a number of options being discussed. We have not made any commitments um, beyond, I think, kind of a, a, the internal commitment to repurpose and reuse that space. Um, for the best kind of the highest use we can we can identify for it. Uh, it is, you know, it, it is uh, over 25 years old. Parts of it, of course, are historic structures. Uh, so there will be some um, renovations and restoration that's needed uh, before we can really repurpose it. Uh, so we're planning to kind of sequence that with the new construction in, a, in an appropriate way. Uh, if I, as I said, I'm, I'm very excited about exploring those possibilities. Uh, we've had some great suggestions from the public uh, of ways that building could be used, and I would definitely welcome and encourage folks to to share and send in, in thoughts and ideas or reach out to us uh, if you have thoughts about how that building can can make an additional commit or contribution to our community. Thank you. And um, the next is what audience uh, research findings. Uh, indicate that the space are for improvements are needed and what other community community needs are addressed in this concept um yeah so i think the for me the the first piece of this project the heart of this project is creating a museum that is as meaningful and relevant to the people of Santa Fe and the residents of, of, of our community as it is to our tourists. I don't think anyone will be surprised uh, if I say that the George O'Keefe Museum has been you know, a, a tourist destination and the beneficiary of tourism since we opened. Um, and, and we, we love our tourists, we're grateful um, for all they have done to support the museum. Uh, and we also wanna be uh, a place of, of meaning and value to our community. Uh, first and foremost, for me, that means welcoming um, welcoming our community, uh, making the building accessible to our community, uh, working with our educational programs to ensure that we have the resources, um, the, not just the physical resources, which this building will create, but the staff resources to be able to host every single school child in the Santa Fe Public Schools um, in our building, not all at once, of course, uh, but over the course of a year, um, that would be a significant increase in school visitation. 
Uh, that's only possible with great partnerships with schools and teachers. Uh, and we're doing the work now to, to build those, those partnerships. You know, we, we've of course have been working with, with teachers and schools um, since the beginning, um, but we're really working now to create a, a much deeper partnership. Uh, a few years ago, we launched a program we called our, our fourth grade curriculum. Uh, and we're hoping to expand that to all fourth graders where there's a, a pre-visit uh, workshop in their classroom, then they visit the museum, and then there's a post-visit uh, kind of follow-up. And it really is tied very directly to the curriculum, uh, the fourth grade curriculum. Um, it's been produced in co cooperation with the school dis district and with teachers. Uh, so it's focused as much on New Mexico history, on social studies, on geography, uh, uh, as anything. And, and so while they may be looking at George O'Keefe paintings, they might also be learning about what a mesa is um, and learning about the history of this region. So I think building on those kinds of programs and having the space, uh, the classroom space, the multi-purpose space, and galleries large enough that you can have school tours simultaneously um, is going to be a huge change for us. If you know our current facility uh, on a busy day when we have lots of visitors in the galleries, it is not fun for anyone to bring a school group in there. It's, it's just not big enough. Um, so we'll have the resources to do all of that. Uh, so, so I think ultimately for me, it's that, it's that education piece that is the most important contribution that we can make with this building. I'm not sure I answered the first part of that question adequately, Debbie. Did I leave a piece out? Uh, no, just uh, just asking about audience research, but I, I think- that's, that, that's the piece I was forgetting, yeah. Um, there has been quite a bit of audience research that's gone in this building. Uh, going back, um, since uh, I've been here about eight, eight and a half years now, and um, we've, we've been doing quite a bit of research over those years to understand our existing audience, to understand potential audience, uh, to understand different ways of, of learning and experiencing um, museums. You know, not all of us approach the museum visit the same way. We have different learning styles. Um, we've, we've learned that we have folks who, for whom a museum visit is a very social experience. They want to be there with family and friends. They want to talk about what they're seeing. They want to engage with one another. That's how they make meaning. They don't really want to hear from a curator. They don't need to read the labels and have someone tell them what they're supposed to experience or see. They want to create that meaning together. Um, then we also have people who, who follow, <clears throat> I think what, what most museums have catered to, uh, a learning style that is, that is more independent, um, more kind of reflective and quiet. Um, these are, are individuals who do wanna read every label, who might wanna listen to a curator. Uh, it is hard to create one space where the reflective learner is comfortable next to a group of social meaning makers. Uh, but we're thinking a lot about how to create displays and spaces that, that do allow different visitor styles and different learning styles to have a, a productive uh, and enjoyable experience. And we received an additional question if we are pursuing LEED certification for this project. Yeah, we're, uh, LEED certification is interesting. We're, we're looking at the LEED standards um, and hoping to, to meet or exceed many of them. Uh, the LEED certification process itself um, is quite a cumbersome and expensive process. Uh, and so I think at this point, the design team and, and my, own, my own feeling has been that um, I would like to focus our time, energy, and resources on improving the building's um, sustainability and environmental uh, kind of footprint, minimizing environmental footprint, uh, and spend less, less of that energy on the certification process itself. But I'm not saying we're not going to get it, um, but uh, I see a question just popped up about what is LEED. Uh, LEED is a, a set of standards for environmentally um, responsible building design. Uh, and so depending on, on the number of, of kind of boxes that your project checks, um, you, can, you can get certification uh, at different, different levels. Um, and it's a way of kind of letting people know that your building is in fact um, built and operated in an environmentally responsible manner. So we're, we're, we're hoping to kind of meet or exceed those standards, um, but uh, not sure if we're actually going to pursue the certification itself. Um, and we received a, a couple of questions uh, addressing parking. Uh, so Cody, could you speak more to maybe the plans for parking situation? Absolutely. Uh, I, it's no surprise. I think and when I talk about this project, that's one of the first questions that always comes up. Uh, what are you going to do about parking? As we all know, there's limited parking in downtown Santa Fe. 
Uh, and of course, this project, um, we, are, we are demolishing and building over an existing parking lot. Uh, the city code uh, is very clear in terms of its requirements that we provide parking. We have been working uh, with some uh, local landowners to identify available parking, uh, existing parking, uh, ground parking lots that we can lease, uh, establish long-term leases on uh, in order to provide parking for both visitors and staff. Excuse me, we also have uh, a, a lot we currently own. Uh, so we are doing our best to meet the code requirements. Uh, we will be asking for a variance from the planning department uh, regarding parking. Uh, and there, there are two pieces to that. One is we are short on the total number of parking spots required. Uh, and I should have these numbers in front of me and I apologize if I'm not 100% accurate. Uh, the numbers start to blur in my mind. I, I believe the code calls for 120 spots. Uh, and at this point we have identified 93. Uh, so we're, we're eking out every spot we can and trying to address that. We've also conducted um, a number of traffic uh, studies and visitor studies um, that have helped us understand more about how visitors get to the museum. Um, the, the, the majority of our visitors do not actually drive to the museum uh, currently. They are visiting downtown Santa Fe, not just the George O'Keefe Museum. Uh, so they are, they're parking in the area and going to multiple locations, having lunch, going to museums, going shopping. Many of them, of course, are staying at local hotels and are on foot. Others are taking bikes. Uh, so we're, we're going to be encouraging um, alternative modes, you know, non, non-vehicular uh, modes of transit. Uh, the advantage of having the transit center right there, you know, I really do believe that, that we're fortunate to have, to have the, the hub of our city transit system right at our door. Uh, and we want to support that. Uh, and I also think in, in terms of, you know, the, the trend uh, for many downtown areas nationally, internationally, uh, and then the future kind of transportation is away from large parking lots. Uh, there's quite a bit of available parking in surrounding public garages. Uh, we cannot count those uh, in terms of, of meeting the code requirements because we can't lease them. We can't take, you know, dedicated use of them. Uh, but we do feel like there is adequate parking for the area. I also believe parking is a community and neighborhood issue um, and no one entity uh, can solve it alone. So we're eager to work with the city and work with our neighbors uh, to find suitable solutions. Uh, the other variance that we're going to be requesting regarding parking has to do with distance. Uh, the code calls for that parking to be within a certain number of feet of the, 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 pro the project entrance. Uh, and our lots we've identified are just beyond that, um, not far, but they are beyond that. So we'll need to ask for a variance on that front. Um, and we also have a question asking about the safety and security measures uh, we'll be taking specifically with the uh, outdoor community garden and that space. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. You know, as, as I <clears throat> hopefully share or shown, you know, the, the public garden, the public green space is an important part of this project. Uh, for me, that is a piece of that invitation to the residents of Santa Fe. Uh, if, if you look at it kind of a, 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 in terms of a space, um, this, this green space that we're creating is almost as large as the plaza. Uh, so it really is a significant um, contribution to downtown Santa Fe, I believe. Um, but we're also very aware um, that with that will come additional responsibilities in terms of keeping that space uh, safe and attractive. Uh, thinking through the kind of day-to-day um, -day maintenance needs that will be there, but also how to ensure that we have adequate uh, security in order to, to protect those spaces, make sure everyone feels safe in those spaces, and handle them after hours. Uh, so. They are designed in such a way that they can be closed off entirely. Uh, so it's possible to at, over, overnight close the spaces off and secure them and, and then that security patrols in there. But we are very much thinking about how to ensure the safety and security of uh, the park areas for our guests. Um, that is very much on my mind, uh, even at this very moment in terms of the safety of my staff. Uh, and of course, the safety of our collections. Uh, so we're, we're very mindful of how to um, create spaces that are welcoming, but also safe. Thank you. Um, we've also had a, a variety of questions uh, 
uh, asking about uh, the future of educational programming. Um, one more about the, the classroom and the multi-purpose space and, and use of that facility. But overall, what's the vision for expanded educational programming? And if we are pursuing uh, additional partnerships or, or yeah. strengthening those? Yes, absolutely. Um, my, my, my team has heard me say this many times. Um, we are an educational institution, first and foremost. Uh, we are a 501c3 nonprofit. Um, that means that the, the IRS has determined that we have a beneficial um, purpose, uh, and that purpose is educational. Um, we do not have nonprofit status because we're a tourist destination. Uh, we have it because of the, of the commitment we have made to education, and I think we must do more. I don't need to tell people that education in New Mexico is, is a challenge. Um, we have not done enough for our children. Um, and I think the O'Keefe Museum may not be able, while we, while we may not be able to solve or fix education in New Mexico, we need to be a part of the solution. We need to be able to help uh, make uh, a positive contribution uh, in the lives of our youth. George O'Keefe herself was a lifelong educator. She started her life as a teacher. She, she never stopped teaching. Uh, and I think that that value um, is, is at the core of who we are. What does that look like in terms of programming? Uh, it means not only a commitment in the facility to um, expanded and improved educational spaces, um, that multi-purpose room and classroom that can be expanded and connected, uh, safe loading and unloading zones and areas. Uh, it also means a dramatic expansion in our staffing and we're, we've already begun that process. Uh, hiring more staff, hiring staff dedicated to community programs. Uh, it means a, a much expanded um, level of activity um, so that we're, we're doing programs every kind of um, every week, every month uh, throughout the spaces. But it, it's not enough to um, do that programming on site and invite people in. Uh, I firmly believe that, that we need to be doing the outreach. We need to be in the schools, um, in, our, in our neighborhoods, in our communities, building trust, creating relationships so that when we do invite our community and our neighbors into the museum, they already know us. They see a friendly face saying, I'm glad you're here. Let me show you what we're going to do today. That's the vision that, that we're building for the O'Keefe Museum's uh, presence in education. We can't do it alone. We're, we're so fortunate to have um, outstanding teachers uh, who have worked with us for many years in some cases, others who are, are just joining us now. Uh, we're building out a, a, a local advisory group um, comprised of teachers. We're also establishing a national advisory group looking to um, museum educators uh, across the country to kind of learn from the best practices available uh, and see what we can implement locally. Uh, so it's it's really expanding that that effort. Um, for many art museums, I think the, the curatorial side of the house, the art side of the house um, has, has often been dominant and you see that in the way those those departments are staffed. Uh, and the O'Keefe Museum historically has been no different. Uh, I think what we're moving towards is a model where the education department is on strong and equal footing. It, it is um, the reason we are here and they need the resources and the space uh, to, to do what they do well. It is not specifically part of this project, but it's worth mentioning that, that we have a longer term vision um, because we have that additional building, the building I, I pointed out where we have office spaces. Um, most of the tenants in that space um, have completed their leases and uh, we have not renewed those leases in order to have additional space to expand into. Uh, we used that space this past summer to host our art and leadership program. Uh, so we've created some additional kind of uh, classroom and art making spaces already in that building and are, are working on a longer term plan to create an even more significant education center uh, using that additional space in our campus. And thank you. And I do want to give a plug of uh, this Thursday, uh, we will be having a uh, another listening session such as this for educators where we've invited um, community educators to have a session like this on this Thursday, October 7th at Santa Fe High School Theater. So if you know a teacher or you are one, uh, we hope to see you there. We'll discuss further. 
Uh, I also, we have a, a few questions and if we're considering on adding eating space or a restaurant uh, part of this design plan. Yeah, we are, we, we are not. Um, we are in the heart of Santa Fe. We are surrounded by wonderful restaurants. Um, we have you know, a number of great restaurants that are, that are immediate neighbors. Uh, and we don't feel like we need to compete with them. Um, we are not in the restaurant business, we're in the museum business. Uh, and the scale of our building, even the new building, is such that you know this is not like the Met. Uh, you're not gonna spend uh, eight hours in this building and, and be exhausted and need, need to eat. Uh, so we feel like we're still going to have a very manageable experience in terms of the scale of the building. Uh, and people can very easily step outside uh, and, and grab lunch next door. Uh, so we're not offering an, any kind of restaurant. Um, we are including a catering kitchen so we can support events and, and special activities. Uh, we're certainly talking about having connections so we could have a coffee cart, uh, that kind of thing for, for light snacks, but we really don't want to get um, into competition with our, our local restaurants. Great. Um, Additionally, can you speak more uh, to the use of the basement space? Yes, thank you. I forgot to mention that. I'm really glad that that was asked. Uh, so the intentions for the lower level, uh, it, is, it is a partially excavated lower level, so it's not the same square footage as the main level, um, but it is space for um, a handful of back of half house type things, um, storage for retail, um, operations, um, there's some uh, uh, utility equipment down there, uh, but the key thing that's down there is a new collection storage vault uh, and conservation lab. Uh, we have never had an adequate collection storage um, space. Uh, we have collections um, squeezed into multiple locations. And, uh, and if I'm being honest, we're, we're well beyond kind of the safe capacity when it comes to being able to store and handle our collections. So we'll finally have adequate space for all of our collections. We'll have space in the kind of storage facilities, the right cabinets, the right racks to store all the kinds of materials that we now collect. Everything from the paintings and drawings, of course, and photographs to clothing, to rugs and other textiles. All of those require kind of their own storage needs. Uh, we've currently commandeered a lot of space that originally was built for our archive to house um, other types of objects. So that means the archives suddenly will have their space restored to them, uh, which they are also needed because the archives have grown dramatically, the libraries grown dramatically. The collections care spaces, the conservation spaces will include a, a proper conservation lab, which we've never had before. Um, and that means adequate ventilation for using solvents when we're removing varnish, um, proper lighting, a proper um, photography studio so we, we can uh, document our works. Uh, we have been the, the beneficiaries of, of a fantastic grant um, from the IMLS, the Institute for Museum and Library Services, a federal granting authority that's helped us acquire uh, the, the, the best camera, digital camera equipment possible uh, for photographing our collections, uh, both for reproduction and study, uh, but also for, for preservation and conservation. We have a remarkable conservation scientist on staff who for 24, 25 years has been studying um, closely the works and materials of George O'Keefe. He is a, a nationally recognized, internationally recognized leader in the use of digital technologies for documentation of artworks and for documenting change in artworks. And so to, for, for that, to have that kind of expertise in a facility that allows them to actually do their work will be ground change or groundbreaking um, for us, very significant. Thank you. And uh, this is the last question um, that we have time for, and it is just asking about the height of the building. Yeah, so, um, and I should have this in front of me, I believe the highest point of the building is 24 feet. Uh, so it's, it's primarily on one level. Um, but there is, uh, there are utility um, HVAC um, equipment uh, spaces um, at, at the rooftop level. Uh, so that's where um, you have those kind of secondary levels um, that you saw on the, the, the highest rep render. 34 feet, I was 10 feet off. Thank you, Robert. Um, I'm, I'm, I've got folks helping me out uh, always. 
and it may be worth mentioning for those that have not worked with the um, with building in the historic district, um, the city actually determines how high we can go uh, based on the surrounding structures, so that nothing is is, is going too high above any of the surrounding buildings. So I think that that is it as we're now just past the top of the hour. Um, but I do know we have a couple other questions and comments and uh, we'd be happy to follow up with you separate. So anything else to close, Cody? I would just thank everyone. Um, I, I truly am grateful for your time this evening. Uh, we are really excited about the future of the George O'Keefe Museum and the future of our community. Uh, I, I keep saying it, but it, it is sincere and it is true. Uh, this project is meaningful because it will be relevant to the people of New Mexico. That is the commitment we're making. Uh, this, this building is just a building. Uh, it is not uh, an end in its own right. It is, it is the, the means to that greater end. And for me, that is the impact we can have in education, the impact we can have in the lives of the peoples of New Mexico. All right. With that, I say, I think I say thank you all. Have a great night. Uh, please do continue to participate in this process. Uh, share your feedback, share your questions, uh, and help us make this the best building that it, we can create for Santa Fe. Thank you and good night. Good night. Thank you.